Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. My name is Joshua Maxwell, and I am the writer and director of the film you are about to see. Thoughts from Food, in its simplest terms, is an observation of people, food, and the thoughts that develop while we eat. All voiceovers recorded for this film are completely unscripted, and each person in this film is shown eating in the same setting and under the same soft light, keeping each shot unbiased and allowing any mental relationships and any opinions to form between you and the thoughts of the people eating. And now, with no further introduction, I give you Thoughts from Food. The exotic dancer eats a smoked habanera salmon salad. So the first thing that I usually think about when I start eating my one main meal, well actually every time I eat, I try to remember to just feel gratitude for the food that I'm about to eat. Um, and I guess maybe part of that is my upbringing. I mean, we used to say grace before meals in my family. Um, but mostly, I think when I got sober 11 years ago, um, and I actually started thinking more about um, what I was grateful for, um, and I realized that gratitude for me is kind of, it, just being grateful for something is kind of like a way of praying for me. So whenever I eat something, I feel like if I'm just being grateful for it, then it's sort of like saying grace, because um, I don't really pray that way anymore. And um, also because for so long, um, I just took so much of my life for granted, but I also, you know, I, I, I didn't eat right, I didn't take you know, I didn't think about what I was eating. I wasn't grateful for my health. I was, you know, I would eat not so much junk, but, you know, just food that um, didn't give me energy or life. I just would eat a lot of breads and cheeses and um, stuff like that. And since now I eat all natural foods and I try to stick with mostly um, raw vegetables and raw nuts, um, food that still has a life force in it. Um, and I feel just really grateful that I've learned how to eat and that I have my health back because for you know, 30 years of my life I was so sick and now every time I eat it's sort of this new way of life for me, this sort of putting healthy stuff in my body now whereas for 30 years 
or you know, 15 years of, of my first 30, I put so much unhealthy stuff in my body from food to drugs and to alcohol. And, and in fact, um, for probably a good five years, I only ate four or five times a week um, because I was so coked out um, at least two or three days a week. You know, I'd be on a, on a coke binge where I just wouldn't eat at all. And then when I would crash and come to 12 hours later or whatever, I would just eat anything that sounded good, which is basically just rich foods with lots of butter and breads and Food that weighed me down and wasn't good for me and this was not healthy it had no nutrients in it um when i'm eating you know if i stay conscious if i stay conscious about what i'm doing and stay in the moment and and, and just really uh taste the food while i'm eating it and um enjoy the texture and the you know i'm all about texture i love to put you know raw nuts on my salad and so you've got the crunchy vegetables and then the crunchy nuts and then the creamy, a little bit of creamy dressing and um, I just like that mix of texture a lot and just all the different flavors and I don't really try to let my mind wander too much as far as like, you know, work or what I have to do that day or what I've just been doing or anything, especially anything I'm stressing about. You know, I just really try to focus on enjoying the food and staying grateful and that's kind of my new way of life, you know. Um, it just kind of goes to actually how I try to live my whole life, but, um, you know, eating has been a really big issue for me all my life because, you know, as a teen, I would, well, I grew up, like my parents fed me the typical American um, food, you know, like eggs and cinnamon rolls that came in a can and it's processed white bread and, and tons of sugar and cereals like tricks and charms and you know, real sugary stuff and homogenized milk and um, white bread processed white bread and peanut butter that's you know I mean there's no nutrition in that food and in fact it's just really bad for you in general and um, lots of meat pork chops and canned other vegetables that we had at dinner were always some canned green beans or canned peas and I mean there's no flavor there's no nutrients and um, and then, uh, yeah, after I left home and started getting new drugs, and I just, I didn't have a lot of money, so I would just buy something quick, and, and I'd rather put drugs in my body than food. And then when I did finally get sober, you know, I, um, I quit smoking right after that. And since I was stressed out all the time trying to figure out how to really function as a sober person, and um, I didn't have my alcohol and my cigarettes to fall back on, I kind of... Um, Ended up, I found myself pretty soon, within about six months or so, in this sort of full-blown um, eating, or I had an eating disorder. I had bulimia really badly for about a year, and uh, maybe two or three years after that, it was a lot better, but I actually struggled with it, probably for a good six years. And um, so while I was, even, even then, being sober and eating healthy food, I was eating a lot of it, and then I would purge, and so it was just this constant struggle um, for a lot of my life and that probably really got under control and stopped being a problem about five years ago so I'm 40 years old and I probably have five years of eating really healthy balanced healthy and balanced and so I am really grateful every time I sit down to eat a really good fresh organic salad I mean it's like a really big deal to me I guess I don't know um, but anyway uh, I guess um, I guess, I don't think I have like a lot of guilt about my past, you know, I really feel like it's just part of life. We make mistakes and we learn from them and we move on. But as part of staying grateful for the life that I have now, I feel like it's important for me to, when I'm eating, just really stay in the moment and enjoy every bite that I chew if, if I can. So that's pretty much what I'm thinking about when I'm, when I'm eating. So um, I guess that's it's a lot of reason to be grateful. I have a lot of reason to be grateful. That's what I think about.
the window cleaner eats a cheeseburger and fries. Can I ask you uh, what you were thinking while you were eating? Oh. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about oh, you really there. I'm recording. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about gun and work and pay me, uh, give me enough money so I pay these bills. And yeah, I was thinking about in my apartment this weekend, thinking about my belated friend and, and uh, thinking about the good Lord. That's about all I was thinking about. I'm always me, I'm, I'm always thinking. I ain't got time to worry. Worry make me have hit it. But I'm always thinking. I can how to try to come out of this hole, how to, how to come out of this death that I'm in. That way I'll be able to save me some money, get in the head, stop working so, so many hours and slow down, enjoy life a little better than being a workaholic. Thinking about her, but I probably need to get her off of my mind. So. She in the field with my beers, but I'm just trying to help her out while she's there. So I was thinking about that. Uh, should I call her before I go to work? And should I wait till I come back? I call her. Yeah, I said, no, I won't call her. Thinking about, I got to go get my clothes ready. I'm a suit, I'm a shirt. Take a shower. Yeah, thinking about going out to dinner tonight. Lord, we'll get rid of early in the morning. Go, uh, go to church and go eat to dinner, then come back and lay down and do a little read and lay down the night, watch the little TV and get ready to go to work Monday morning. Lord, we are. All that was running across my mind. Mind, yeah, like a computer. <laughs> and that's about it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, during the whole, I guess you said, how can you mean do all this thinking in, what, five minutes? <laughs> but you just don't know your mind. <laughs> Thank you.
yoga instructor eats Thai noodles, crackers, and no bean hummus. Um, my thoughts kind of turned into what, what was obvious was going on was that I was being observed while I was eating, which I guess we always are being observed while we eat, but we don't really think about it. You know, it's one of those things that you do on a date or with family or with friends or in company or by yourself walking around in the streets or whatever. And nobody really thinks about being observed while they're eating. So to be in that position where all of a sudden I was there, very conscious of the fact that there were cameras and eyes looking at me while I was eating was a very interesting awareness. Um, eating for me is usually a bit of a meditation anyway. I tune into what I'm eating and why I'm eating it and, and I love to look at the colors and the textures and, and all of these different things that are going on. And so while I was doing that, I was also very aware of this external observer of really noticing what I was actually doing and really feeling how each bite was moving into my mouth and kind of navigating the noodles. And at certain points I thought, wow, this is like the least elegant choice I could have made, you know, to have these noodles to, to deal with, with the chopsticks and everything. Um, but it made it fun in a way, you know, just to kind of experience that sense of myself as an observer of myself while I was doing something that normally is a very private thing. And even if I don't realize it's a private thing, you know, sitting in the middle of some place surrounded by people, you feel like you're alone and that no one can see you, but they can't. And so just kind of bringing that awareness into what I was doing was really, really interesting. Or outer body experience, I suppose. And then added to that, I was thinking a lot about the fact that what I was eating was very different from what I would normally eat. And, um, you know, because I normally eat very, very simply, you know, just a, a piece of fruit. And I, I tend to eat, I'm mostly fruitarian, and I tend to eat just mono meals, which is one, one type of food at a time. And um, I've gotten very used to doing that. And so whenever I eat something very complex like that, which was these zucchini noodles and all these fresh vegetables and the sauce on it and all these different flavors kind of moving in and out of each other and trying to figure out where, where each flavor came from and how they work together. And it was just such an interesting experience. It was almost like a sensory overload of just all of these different reactions going on in my mouth and my head and my body and, um, and how different that was and because I usually mono meal because I'm usually eating just one type of food at a time I've gotten so used to feeling that moment of when your body is done it's had enough food and it's sated and I didn't get that feeling at all I'm still waiting for it and I was really really hungry when I started eating and so I just kept, I felt like at the beginning, I was just shoveling it in, just eating as fast as I could to get food into my system. So I just kept eating and eating and eating and waiting for that click of that's enough and it never came. I think just because there was just so much going on in addition to all the other kind of things that were going on in my head.
Some of the things that went through my mind as I was uh, looking at the salad, um, the first things that came to my mind was that, you know, my dad could grow fresher tomatoes than what is in that salad. Um, and it reminded me of, uh, you know, living out in the country, growing fresh vegetables in the garden and uh, going out <clears throat> in the evening before dad got home from work and, you know, picking uh, fresh onions. Mom would already have tomatoes sitting in the windowsill, ripening and stuff like that. Sometimes she'd put them in the refrigerator and they'd be ice cold. You just eat them sliced, you know, just like they were food. I mean, you could just have that as a meal. It was great. And, um, <clears throat> the um, one one thing that kind of crossed my mind when I was looking at uh, the lettuce is. Um, some of the pieces were a lot, a lot bigger than the others, and that kind of bothered me because um, when I make my own salads, I like I like things to be kind of kind of uniform as far as bite sizes. Because uh, there was one bite that I took that was kind of big, and you know, I was stabbing around, and, and already it was already on my fork, and I thought, well, I gotta. I gotta put this in my mouth, you know, this is a bigger bite than I really wanted to take, and it's one of those bites that uh, my mom would say, you shouldn't put so much in your mouth, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I specifically chose the, the crispy fried chicken salad because um, my mother used to cook up, you know, just huge batches of fried chicken for us, especially on Sundays. It's something about meals, especially family meals, that always draws me to the memory of my mother. I lost her in 1997. Uh, she was only 70 years old. Uh, way, too, way too young, in my, in my estimation. And being at a, at a table and, and, and eating was our, um, that was the spot in the house, was the table and food. And so it's hard for me to eat alone because I'm so used to eating and chatting and, and, and so forth. So when I do have to eat alone, I'm on the run, I have to pull over, I have to eat. Uh, well, a lot of times I'll just I'll just forget because if I don't have somebody to eat with, I, I just assume almost not eat. So I I try not to eat by myself too much. 
but I've spent too many, too many times where I have. Um, and I, I find myself, I, I, I don't, I don't find myself having those favorite restaurants that I just have to go to. Uh, my favorite, you know, when I think of a favorite restaurant, it's always the ones where I get to go with the crowd, with the family, and uh, I miss that. I'm the youngest of five. All my brothers and my sister, they all were, were at least five years or more older than me, and they grew up and were gone for a lot, a lot of part of my, you know, uh, you know, early teenage and, and later life uh, while I was at home and no one was around. So it was a big deal when everybody came home for the holidays. And then they started having kids and then, you know, they didn't come home so much. And uh, never seemed to bother my mom and dad, but I was real lonely, to be honest with you. And uh, nowadays, I guess, when I sit down to eat, especially by myself, uh, I guess I get a little, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's a pity party or what, but I start, I start having those lonely feelings. Um, and I get, I find that I'm real, real picky. Uh, it's easy for me to find fault if the food's not right or something or whatever because it, it, it's almost like some kind of reaction to not wanting to be there by myself to eat. And so if I've got to, you know, by golly, it ought to be right. You know, or, or maybe it's the only way I can get some interaction. You know, even, even complaining and get some interaction. Um, I didn't really thought about it so much. I didn't realize how much uh, eating uh, has to do with the process of um, contemplation and, and the difference between eating with someone and without someone, uh, the details of, of things, the choices you have to make. Um, and so it, it kind of bothers me. Maybe I'm just a little too complicated. Maybe I'll just be simple, sit down, eat, and move on, you know? But I don't know. Coffee barista eats Tom Ka and Tad Thai. Which I, I think maybe you're, we're not as conscious of when we're like out, like enjoying 
crew of people or even by ourselves, but we're definitely you know, we're conscious that other people are watching. Yeah, you, I think you tend to question your habits. But, you know, from what I can see, I think I have pretty good <clears throat> clean habits. I like eating Chinese because I like to use the sticks, or I like to eat eating Asian food because I was Thai. Because I like using chopsticks because it makes me feel cool. I learned how to do it in like seventh grade. And uh, I always get chopsticks now because it's fun. <clears throat> I didn't realize that um, chopsticks make picking through Asian food at the end a lot more fun. It's kind of like digging for treasure. Like, uh, I think some people have habits of picking out the best parts of their food when they're kind of at the end of their meal. I think, And I think that leads to the fact that some people, like, a lot of people just don't know when to say when, you know? When they're full, like, the food is so good, they just keep eating and eating and eating. And uh, I think that's a funny habit. I think it's, it actually feels really good once you realize that habit and kind of get control of it. <clears throat> when you're able to go, no, I don't need you more, I'll put this away. It's really refreshing. I, um, I tend to eat really slow too. I don't know if I was eating slow right there, but uh, my grandmother was a really slow eater when I was a kid and we used to go out to eat with her a lot. And so I just learned to eat slow so that we would be sitting and waiting for her to finish. And uh, I think it's a good habit because I saw on, uh, like on a documentary once about fat camp that like people would go to this camp to learn how to get better eating habits and they would hand out <clears throat> like a slice of pizza to every fat person there and they'd say eat this pizza like you would any other day and these people would just wolf this thing down and then they would hand out another slice and they'd say no I want everyone to take five minutes to get this pizza down. I want it, I want it to last five more minutes. So eat really slow, chew a little bit more, maybe think about the way it tastes in your mouth. <clears throat> and I decided that was a really good habit. It's a good idea to try to appreciate what you have. So I think it's it's good that I eat slow. I, I do try to be conscious of what I'm eating while I'm eating it so I can appreciate it because, you know, it doesn't have to be, like if you're eating peanut butter and jelly because you're poor or ramen noodles, if you kind of stop and, you know, if, it doesn't take a lot to, to make something a little bit more appreciative out of ramen noodles. You can add whatever you want to it when you stop it. A very unique spice, yeah, the, the, the aftertaste, you know, and like, if you're just more conscious of the way your food tastes, I think it's a little bit easier to enjoy it. And on, on that fact too, I think when you're eating, <clears throat> um, you could throw a drag if you're like, man, peanut butter and jelly again, like, I'm tired of being poor and blah, blah, blah. But really, if, if you're, if it's because you're hungry, Remember the fact that when you eat it, when you're done eating, like 20 minutes later, you don't even know. You don't remember what you ate, you know? Nobody thinks about what they ate, you know, like 10, 20 minutes after they're done eating. So it doesn't matter what you ate as long as you're not hungry again, you know? So it kind of, I guess it goes either way, but um, the fact that I stop and smell my food, especially really hot food, I think people have a tendency to blow on hot soup to cool it down. And <clears throat> instead of doing that, like I like to smell it because the heat, you know, the hot steam and stuff will bring the, the scent of the food right up to your nose. And so instead of blowing on food, or I, I'll start a meal like that a lot. I'll, uh, I'll take a good whiff of what I'm about to eat just to try to slow down and appreciate it a little bit more. And I, I, think, I think it's really effective. I think it makes it a lot easier to appreciate what you're eating if you just slow down with everything <clears throat> and taste it all, so. But, um... I wonder if um, <clears throat> they say that your sense of smell is the is the sense that invokes like memory the quickest. Like you can hear a song and you can remember the good old days and you can like you know watch a movie or something like that. But they say that like, as soon as you smell something that you remember from your childhood, like it swoops you right back to the, like the candy aisle or something like that. <clears throat> and they say that your sense of taste is. Half of it is your sense of smell, you know, because uh, uh, the sensors are like right next to each other. So people who can't smell that well, like probably can't taste food that well. But I don't know if that makes food like the right memory invoking. It could be. If it's right, if it walks hand in hand with sense 
doesn't smell. Um, like, if you could smell really well and you taste really well, maybe eating food does it both moments really fast for you. So, uh, that's, that's I think that's why when you're sick, like you can't taste any food because you're all clogged up and stuff. All you taste is like this. Mucus again. <laughs> that's all it ever is around this place. Mucus for breakfast. Mucus for breakfast. <laughs> there was a part where I was sure. On the hot soup. I like that too. I like when something's so hot that it like it makes everything start dripping, you know, your forehead and your eyes and even your nose starts getting a little runny. I think it's a really good feeling. Oh my, my roommate brought this up too and I never really thought about it, but he said it's no coincidence that the hottest places of the globe have the hottest food, like Indian food and Mexican food. They're all like right on the equator. <clears throat> and the reason that like equatorial countries, uh, if that's a word, um, like hot, have hot food is because hot food makes you sweat and sweating pulls you down really fast. Like it helps you, it keeps you cool. Like hot foods actually keep your body temperature low. So. That's cool. Yeah. That. Yeah. The massage therapist eats a tuna fish salad. Can I, can I write it down or bring, bring it on? a nice plate like that, a nice green 
vegetable plate with eggs and tuna and everything in it. Sometimes I don't always have the time and I, I don't really eat healthy like I should. Um, and I want to cook healthy for my family because it's what's most important. Because they say when the family sits around the dinner table that that's the best time for family to talk and it's very much of a um, get together place where the whole family can get together is around the kitchen table. I wish I could cook healthy for my family and um, also for my metal arts meetup I like to cook for them but the kind of food I have to cook for them is always tacos because it's got to be a hand food that, I, that they can pick up and put in their mouth and um, sometimes Bobby, my boyfriend, he doesn't always eat healthy and sometimes I feel guilty when he takes me out to eat to a Mexican restaurant and end up, end up eating all this not healthy food. He tries I know he means good, but he doesn't always eat healthy, which kind of affects me sometimes. Um, sometimes when I'm eating salad, I feel like I, I feel like uh, sometimes when I eat salad, I, I eat it with, well, like when I'm at home, of course, I eat it with my hands and I just try and put it in my mouth like that, but sometimes it's so hard to get the salad and balance it on your fork. So I, or sometimes I just get like a vegetable tray and just put it mm -hmm. in my mouth that way. But sometimes it's just hard to just get it in my mouth. And um, that's kind of a dumb excuse for not eating salad that I can't get it in my mouth. Um, but I feel better after I eat because I, I have low blood sugar and if I can just stay on this high protein diet I think I'll be okay and um, my life will be a lot easier for me and um, if I can just take care of my health because I'm, I'm like the only one that's going to take care of my health no one else, no one else is going to help me except myself and so I have a big responsibility to take care of myself which Sometimes I don't always do because I'm always taking care of everyone else. Um, but I think I do okay, and, and I feel like um, I am losing weight, and um, it's all good. And, um, there's a lady in my metal arts meetup that's that's vegetarian and um, when I cook for the metal arts meetup now I just cook all vegetarian food because it's easier to cook um, all vegetarian instead of some meat and then some vegetarian because it's too complicated that way so now I just cook all vegetarian and um, I like I like it when people eat my food because um, I feel like I'm, I'm helping them, and I think I'm a good cook. I get that from my mom, and um, my mom's a good cook. She's 80 years old now, and I'm hoping my daughters would be good cooks. They say you are what you eat. And uh, I, I believe that. But sometimes I don't believe it.
of a musician eats a veggie sub and chips. Um, I thought, at first I thought that, I, I hope I don't eat weird. And then I started thinking, I, I'm kind of a man's man. I'm like a caveman type of person. And then I started thinking it's going to be really hard for me to quit smoking cigarettes. And I was like, but these ginseng cigarettes, that might help. I was wondering if I was just fooling myself again because I've gone through this a million times. Then I started thinking this. I went da dun dun da dun da dun dun da dun da dun dun da dun. And this went on for about uh, seven minutes, just a song, and it was kind of it went dun 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 dun. dun. Dun, dun, dun. It was kind of jazzy and shit. Then I had a chip and I went, holy shit, these chips are really spicy. Put them down and then the song I was thinking of turned into Miles Davis. You know what I'm talking about? Off a of kind of blue. So then I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot the song. Now it's kind of blue. So, and then, uh, I thought at the end, I, I bet I wiped my mouth a whole lot. I bet that I really wiped my mouth a lot. <laughs> that was it. The waitress eats a falafel gyro, spana copita, and baklava.
sitting there. Oh, awesome, my food. <laughs> Yay. And, you know, I opened it up and started eating, and, and I was like, oh wow, there's two cameras on me. <laughs> it's weird. And I was like, I'm supposed to be thinking about things, you know? And then I was like, okay, roller coasters. I was like, what? I was like, why are you thinking about roller coasters? You don't think about roller coasters. I was like, okay, that, that's not gonna work. And I just started to feel awkward and like, oh gosh, there's cameras on me. I have to think about things. This doesn't feel natural to just like force my, like, cause I don't know if it is natural to think while I'm eating or I've never noticed the thoughts before. I'm sure they're there and they just stream it in and out, but you're more focused on your food rather than, you know. So I was thinking about that a lot and then I started to notice, I was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna get food all over my face? I was like, I started to feel like, ah, really like, and the falafel kept on falling out of the pita and I was wondering if I had tzatziki sauce all over my face and I was just like, oh no. I will look like a complete slob. And I was like, if this movie gets big, there'll be people all around the world seeing me eating like a complete slob. And then I started to notice like, okay, well, I'm gonna put the, that down because I want to drink now. And I was like, okay, it feels unnatural to put my food down. I feel like I just have to keep eating it and eating it. And so I put it down and I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna drink now. And it just felt like I was like noticing every little action that I did and like if, you know I, I noticed that I pulled apart my food a lot which I've never really noticed before and I was just noticing all these strange little things and then I was like oh man I wish I had a napkin <laughs> to wipe my hands and my face with and I started thinking about how I wish I picked up the, up the napkin at a, the, the restaurant that I work at and I started thinking about how they forgot to give me an extra set of tzatziki sauce, which I asked for, and how it seemed like the falafel wasn't cooked as good as it usually was, and I was just like, man, those jerks, they didn't make my food awesome, <laughs> but it was still good, but I don't know, I was like, oh, yeah. plus when I went in there, they were like all crazy and running around and uptight, and I was thinking about that, and then I started to think about um, the neighbor upstairs last night when he was pounding on the ceiling and wondering if he still was going to call the landlord about my boyfriend going up there and yelling at him and wondering if I was going to get evicted. That scared me a little bit. I'm wondering about that all day. going back to me wondering whether I had food all over my face and then trying to think about you know things <laughs> yeah I don't know I'm sure there was other things that occurred it's just hard to remember your, your streams of thought I guess at least as a whole
the bellhop eats Oreo cookies and milk. Mom's incarcerated. Mom's been in prison for about 10 years and on and off. I was uh, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about, you know, when she's coming home. And when my brother's coming home, he's incarcerated too. I didn't think you'd think about the weed, but I, I thought about that. I was just sitting there, I was just like, man, man, mom coming home. You know, Christmas around the corner. My birthday, blah, blah, blah. Another year, another calendar year coming up. Mom coming home. Just thinking about my, you know, beautiful wife. Just thinking about her. Trust me, be a faithful husband, be a good husband to her. I, I was also thinking about um, a rapper, uh, <laughs> rapper named Master P. I don't know why I was thinking about him. I was listening to my iPod. I wasn't listening to him. I, just, I was thinking about Master P, a rapper. Um, I used to listen to him a long time ago. And it goes back to my brother. My brother put me on that music. And I, used, and I was like, Master P, I wonder what he's doing now. Not his, little, not his son's. And that's why for the USC. Um, thinking about um, big game, big game coming up, Super Bowl. I want the Super Bowl because I don't know who I'm going to pick this year because my team sucks balls. Let's take those rounds. Oh, mom, come on, man. That's, that's, that's usually what I think about, man, when I'm eating because I'm eating the good food out here. I and mean, she's eating stuff like that's what I was doing. Cause my aunt, my aunt was on the, my aunt was on the bus, and she was saying we were talking about when my mom was gonna get home. Well, I told her I was like, hey, I think, I think my mom's coming home in February. That's what I heard. And she was like, ah, that's what I heard too. But I heard your brother was coming home before your mom. I said, are you serious? I, said, I just want to be home already. Shit. Yeah. You know it's, about, it's about time. So I was thinking about that when I was sitting there eating. When, when she's gonna come, she's been on, she's been in prison for like ten years already. By the time we come home, man. Got responsibilities out here, man. Environmental Canvasser 
eats. A pork torta. thinking about how other cultures um, you know, think about food and how you know, our culture and my life specifically the, the life that I lead um, I've gotten very picky with the way I've eaten um, for kind of moral and health reasons but um, you know, eating what I had since it was like kind of a, a different culture's food was kind of more thinking that you know it's a luxury to eat sometimes you know I uh, these days I'm like on a different budget than I'm used to like much lower so I've been having to change my eating habits as a way to not be so picky ultra picky and uh, realize that you know I, I like I, like I said I'm lucky to have food sometimes <clears throat> in our culture we kind of take that for granted um, we, we have so many options and money's usually not an issue, but uh, to the majority of the world, it's like it, you don't have the options and you're sometimes you're just lucky to eat it all. So it's kind of, think of thinking of it from that perspective, um, that this is a different culture's food and you know, maybe somebody in, living in Mexico City, might, that might be like a feast, you know, or a treat for them. So I should kind of respect it as that. And, uh, and enjoy it, and, and I did. I really enjoyed it. Um, typically, I don't eat pork. I don't remember the last time I ate pork, and, uh, and it's really tasty. <laughs> but I don't typically eat food for um, for taste reasons. Typically, it's more um, nourishment and uh, try to try to eat socially responsible. Try not to support factory farms or you know. The, the, necessarily the meat industry. Um, I don't necessarily think it's good for me, so I typically avoid it. But uh, since I was at Taqueria, and I didn't really, you know, couldn't really read the menu very well, understand it, and talking to him about it, just decided at that moment, I'm not going to be picky. I'm just going to roll with, you know, with his suggestion. And he let me sample a little bit, and it was good. So, you know, picking this out. So um, primarily what I was thinking about and, uh, you know, kind of try to tap into that, uh, that uh, the fact that I do take food for granted sometimes and it's not granted, you know, it's, it's a, it is a luxury. The high school student eats chicken flautas.
while I was eating, I was trying not to think about what I was eating or what I was doing. So I was just kind of preparing everything because I'm very meticulous when I do stuff. So I kind of set everything up and then was just like, okay, I'm just going to start eating. So I was trying to decide if I wanted to put stuff on my chicken flautas or just leave them, you know, by themselves. So I was throughout the meal trying different things on my chicken flautas. Um, and that was only part of what I was thinking about while I was doing it. I was like putting them in and trying the different little, each of the little things like the tomatoes and the... I eventually found the sour cream that was hidden underneath one of them. So that was a surprise. Um, while I was eating, it was like, okay, so I was thinking about several different things all at once. Um, one of them was what I'm going to put on my food. Another thing was that, like, oh god, I wish I had a napkin because these were really greasy. So, um, during it, I was, like, wiping my hands on my hands and pants, like, very nonchalantly. And, uh, and, uh, just trying the food. And it was really good. I was not expecting it to be so good. Um, so I was, like, trying not to think about what I was doing or what I was thinking about. So I was focusing a lot on the food that I was eating. And then all of a sudden I started singing that new Beyonce song, If I Were a Boy, in my head. And I don't know where it came from. And I was like, what is going on? Because <laughs> I was thinking about what I was thinking about. So I didn't realize that I was singing in my head. And so I was like, this is really weird. And so I started thinking about iTunes because it's a song that you can buy on iTunes because it was the number one song uh, last time I checked online, which was earlier today. And so because I started thinking about iTunes, I started thinking about the uh, episode of The Simpsons that was playing when I was ordering my food. Because when I was ordering my food, they had a TV, like two TVs set up while I was waiting at the bar by myself, which was really funny because people were like, what girl bar? Um, and so I was watching the thing and it was like my pod and like Lisa was talking to the dude who owns it about her iPod. So I started thinking about that. And then I started thinking about TV shows. And so while, while I was eating and cleaning my hands and trying to pick out what I was going to put in my food next, and thinking about just like what the surroundings in my area and thinking about what I was thinking about, I was also thinking about TV shows. And so I started thinking about Dexter, which is a TV show that I like. And I was, I was thinking, when am I going to watch the next episode? Is there a next episode? When does it come on? And I started thinking about all of these like TV shows. And then I started thinking about a house, which my family watched the other day. And so I started thinking about Numbers, which is another TV show, which I started thinking about pumpkin pie because while I was eating, while I was watching the Numbers TV show, I was eating pumpkin pie. And so while I was eating pumpkin pie, I started to think about Thanksgiving, which had just happened, and I was thinking about my family. And then while all this is going on, I'm just putting guacamole on my flautas, which I usually don't eat guacamole, and so this was really weird. And so I was like putting it on, I was like, whoa, this is really good. And I was trying to, and I was like starting to see what I like more on the flautas, which I liked. I didn't like the sour cream or the lettuce or the cheese as much as I liked the tomatoes and the guacamole. I guess because they just added like this flavor or something to it. So I started thinking about my family who was in town, which we had gone to a restaurant called Matel Rancho when they were in town. And while we were there, my mom, we, me and my sister got uh, fajitas and we got, and it had guacamole on the side. And we, my, they had this debate while we were eating dinner about whether you should like guacamole or not. And while I was eating, thinking about this because I was putting guacamole on my flautas, and I was like, well, this is really crazy because I don't like guacamole. So I just kind of, after that, I just kind of like stopped thinking that I remember and I started focusing on the food again and was just thinking about this is really good food.
the engineer eats a cheeseburger and fries. kind of reminiscing, going over the day, you know, what happened, you know, this particular day in particular, uh, what I did, who I talked to, you know, maybe what I talked about, you know, what am I going to do after I leave here, you know, uh, can't think about a lot of good things, man, my life in general, you know, what's really going on in my life, you know. A lot of things turn over in my mind you know, during the day. And sitting down here eating is like, you get, a, you get a little bit more of a chance to reevaluate things, you know, because you're, you're sitting there, you're alone, you're in solitude, you know, the only thing you have in front of you is whatever you're eating. And, uh, and the whole world, you know, it's like, what are you going to do from this point on? It's a lot. Of, it's, it's a lot of. It's an event. It's a lot of fun. You know, just thinking about your life. You know, a lot of people don't think about their lives. You know. I'm, I'm different. I think about my life. You know, where I'm going to be in six months. Where I'm going to be in three months. You know, where I'm going to be in a year. What am I going to be doing in a year? You know, what's my, you know, uh, what's my agenda for? Say, say this month, the next uh, 10 days, what am I going to do? You know, how, how am I going to advance in, in, in my future? And a lot of those things go through your mind, you know. What is your relationship like with your girl today? What has it been like this month, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and everything is pretty much good, you know? Because I'm always thinking, even in my evaluation that somebody's, somebody somewhere is in a whole lot worse condition than I'm in, you know. So it makes things good. It kind of unclouds your mind. It, it unclouds your, your thinking capacity. And it causes you to have an open mind. And that, well, maybe I'm not, I'm not really doing that bad after all. There's so many places in the world, man. So many people. So much going on that I'm not, you know, that I'm not uh, affiliated with. You know, you know, what did I see on the news today? What kind of music did I listen to today? You know, you know, who did I, who did I converse with today? You know, family, friends. You know, uh, just pretty much. What's next? And those things are important. You know, what's next? Because you never know what's next. You know, especially when you're trying to do right, when you're trying to live right. There's a lot of adventure in that. You know, in a day, in a 24-hour period, there's so much adventure in what's gonna happen next. Because you really never know. You know, and I'm like, I really don't know. But whatever it is, I hope it's good. I hope it's upright and in right standing with, with, with doing what's right. But life is good. When I evaluated everything and balanced it all out, everything's been good today. And I'm grateful.
wonderful things he's done in my life and in my life. The wonderful things that he's brought me out of. And, I, and, I, and I'm reminded of every day that when I'm going through, if he's on my, if he's the main on my agenda, I'm coming out smelling like a rose. And those are the things I think about. Awesome.